And here is a video review for the Kamen Rider Forze DS NS or DX NS Magphone. This is the Switch 31 and 30 uh, for the north and south magnet poles. Um, he did try to use these without the Magphone attachments and it's just switches, and and they messed up and just made him super magnetized, so they became the NS Magphone which apparently gives him full control over the magnet powers and lets him turn into magnet states, as seen here on the box, with the uh, north and south magnets on his shoulders and then the controllers on the belt. And we'll get into that in a minute or two. Let's look at the phone itself first. And um, you just want to turn both halves on right up here. Yeah, and see, so pushing this button opens up. It locks in place closed. It locks in place open. Um, I'm going to push this button right here to call various characters. Things like Tengo, Yugi, and uh, Gentaro are the are the the, uh, the three people that are on the phone. I haven't heard any of the other characters um, that I've recognized yet. Um, but there's th these two buttons. Uh, pushing this one up here just says you've got mail. And then... Uh, if you let it sit for a while, there's somebody calling me on the phone, and I just push this to answer it. Yeah, so Yuki had to call and leave a message for me. And that'll that'll run a couple of times every, every 20, 30 seconds. Uh, but you've got mail. You can push this button to get a random phone call or to call somebody and get a random message. So there's that, and like I said, if you let it sit for a few seconds, it will, uh, you'll hear the, uh, the henshin noise ringtone, and, uh, get a random phone call. Every now and then you'll get, uh, can throw, uh, saying ucha kita, which is fun. Um, but trying to get one specific noise would take forever. This is something about Zodiarts. Um, so yeah. Um, and then to separate them, you just squeeze these two pieces, these two buttons right here, which lets them pop apart, and then they become the two separate switches. Um, now, these won't just plug into the belt and make noise. Like, most of the sounds are actually in the halves themselves. Oh, there we go. And there's Gentaro, Yuki, and Kengo. Um, we'll turn that off for right now, just so it doesn't keep ringing while we're doing this. Um, most of the sounds for these switches are actually in the phone itself and not in the belt. There's a little tiny switch right here in this groove that gets pushed in when you uh, attach it to the belt, and that's what allows the, uh, and that's what changes the noises that the uh, the phone itself makes into into the weaponized noises. As you'll see here, I'm gonna pull the belt out here. Let me turn the belt on. Unplug rocket and radar, and these plug into the either end here. And you see, they don't make. Oh, that's, that one says N magnet. I don't know why the S magnet didn't say anything. Huh. Oh, because the S magnet's off. Yeah, sorry. Let me turn it on. There you go. And they kind of glow up here at the top, um, but once those are in, uh, they won't like you. You won't get phone calls once you once you've plugged this in and it's recognized that it's in the actual um, um, the actual. And you'd see you'd heard that the, the the deactivation noise synced up with both this and the phone, and 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 they pretty and they do sync up pretty well. There's two switches on the back here that allow you to turn these on, and there is a little bit of delay on this one. Uh, because if you press them both at the same time, you'll hear they don't quite sync up right. But if you, if you hit the end magnet just a little bit beforehand, it uh, they, they sync a little bit. I haven't gotten it perfect yet, but... Uh, there you go. And they mostly sync up. And then once they are 
go ahead and turn them on. Oh, okay, that's a different noise. Um, and once they're activated, you can move them or uh, lean them forward to control the shoulder guns. And pull the triggers to fire the gun. Um, so you can simulate that. And then uh, back here on the back of the red one, there's the, the final um, the limit break button. And pushing that in the show would detach the two guns from his shoulders and it would hook together to form like a giant rail cannon. And you just hold that down. And you pull the trigger and it make and it makes the limit break noise. And if you turn them off, you'll again you'll hear the sound sync up between the uh, the deactivation noise sounds at the same time in both the uh, belt and the phone. And they've done a pretty good job of syncing that up, much like the uh, the Super One uh, rocket switch uh, that came from the movie for Rocket States. So yeah, there's the NS Mag phone. As a controller in the uh, in the Force driver. Now, uh, obviously, these aren't going to fit in a standard switch cabin. And honestly, like it's it's kind of a shame because we're probably not going to get. Um, I just don't see how they're going to make um, like any sort of Gashapon version of the switch. I guess they could, but it would just be the switch, which if you know in the show, you don't want to use because it just magnetizes you. So we'll see if we uh, this this may be the only version to get. The 30 and 31 switches, who knows? We'll find out, I guess, as time goes on. Um, while we're here, though, I do have some new switches to show off that I've gotten since last time. So go ahead. There's Rocket. We know, that, know about that one. But we've got um, Medical Switch, which goes here on the left arm. Um, we've got uh, a Wheel Switch, which goes here on the left leg. And then we've got a couple of right leg switches. First off, we'll do pen, which lets him paint things and make them solid. He just used it last week to uh, paint Chameleon so he could spot Chameleon when it disappeared to fight it. So then we just turn pen on. And that's all there is to pen. The wheel, which turns his wheel into like a little Segway device. Uh, medical give it looks like a syringe pusher plunger on here, and it gives him like a medical kit on his left arm to lets him heal people. And there are those switches. Um, I'll swap out the the hand switch. This is not magic hand. This actually puts gives him a giant like mechanical arm on his leg that can do things while he works on something else. And um, and this switch is kind of cool. Like you'll you see, there's like a little hand there on it, um, and when you plug it in. And when you push this button, the hand pops up in a little stopping motion. Which I just think is kind of cool, the way that little button works. So there, those are the, the new switches I've gotten since then. There, there's a new switch set out that I'll probably have on the way soon, which is claw and board, which gives him like a wolverine claw on his right arm and then like a snowboard on his left foot. Um... He can use, um, I don't have the scoop switch yet. I'm working on getting that. There's a screw switch, which gives him like a submarine leg, like a, you know, the propeller uh, for searching underwater. I'm trying to think what other switches we've seen that I haven't gotten yet. Um, there's, oh, there's a giant foot switch. Uh, and a few others. So we're getting, but we're getting close. We're into like the mid thirties of the 40 switches that Forza uses. So, um, so pretty soon we'll have all 40 switches. We're getting there. But yeah, there's uh, the new switches here, as well as the uh, the NS Mag phone. A lot of fun. Also, I've recorded the uh, ringtone to use on my phone, so that's going to be cool. But yeah, there it is, uh, DX NS Mag phone.